I was watching old episodes of Jimmy Kimmel show and George Clooney was on and he was explaining this photo of himself as a teenager. Let's have a look. This is, that was 13, this is 15. That's hot. Now wait, I want to point out something because you're going to laugh, uh -huh. you're going to make a joke. Okay. I have Bell's palsy there and half of my face is paralyzed. Oh. Look at this, watch this. If you go like this, ah. And then on the other side, it's a completely different face. Oh. Yeah. So oh, now make your joke. I was just going to make your funny joke. <laughs> Come on, funny man. So as a teenager, he had Bell's palsy. This is a temporary paralysis of one side of the face. And the most interesting thing is we don't actually know what causes it, but we do know that sometimes it is related to the herpes family of viruses. What happens is a patient gets infected with this virus such as Epstein-Barr virus and varicella virus and the body deals with it and sort of, you know, packs it away, which we call laying dormant. And what can happen in the future is this virus can get reactivated for various reasons such as being unwell, being stressed, whatever it is. And it can cause inflammation within the nerve that it was in. And in Bell's palsy, it causes inflammation of your facial nerve. This is a nerve that exits from the brain through the ear and out to supply muscles of your face. Remember that for a muscle to move, so even for you to smile, you need to contract the muscles that are there. And to do that, you need a nerve supply. If the nerve isn't working properly, then the muscles don't get the signal that it needs and it stays flaccid. What's a word? How can doctors differentiate Bell's palsy from a stroke? Well, interestingly, in Bell's palsy, it leads to complete paralysis of one side of your face, including your forehead. Whereas in stroke, although one side of the face is still affected, there is still some wrinkling in the forehead on the affected side. The important thing is you shouldn't diagnose this yourself at home. Whenever you have any types of paralysis, you need to call 999. But also in a stroke, we would expect other things as well, such as weakness in your arms and legs and other pathology that would add up. So what can be done for Bell's palsy and is it permanent? Well, luckily over 90% of patients recover full muscle activity, meaning they don't have any drooping and they can smile as they usually did, which is what happened in George Clooney's case. However, for a small minority, there can be some lasting effects where the muscle doesn't regain its full strength, so you might have a bit of a lopsided smile or an odd wink. Once Bell palsy has been diagnosed, the doctor will prescribe steroids and sometimes can prescribe antivirals as well because we have seen its connection with the herpes virus. However, there isn't a lot of evidence to say this helps, but we still add it in. But the most important thing really is to protect your eye. So imagine if you can't smile, you can't blink on that side either. And blinking is really important to help lubricate our eye. This is the reason why we involuntarily blink throughout the day. It keeps our eye lubricated and protects the cornea. So in Bell's palsy, because the blinking effect is also affected, we need to ensure that the eye is kept lubricated until the nerve recovers and the muscles are able to contract again. So patients are asked to frequently put in eye drops, lubrication ointment, and in the night, they are advised to tape their eyes shut. So an interesting fact, during the regrowth of this facial nerve to re-innovate, meaning go back and attach itself to the muscles to resend signals, they are able to track their original path and go to their desired muscles. However, some nerves can actually sidetrack from their original path and attach to muscles they weren't related to before. This is known as synkinesis. For example, a nerve that's involved in smiling might also grow to attach itself to the muscles that affect blinking. So when the person closes their eye, they may involuntarily lift the corner of their mouth. That is Bell's palsy in a nutshell. Takeaway message, never diagnose it yourself. Always speak to your doctor. If you're worried about a stroke, call an ambulance. And most importantly, if you enjoy this video, then all you need to do is hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, I'd love to have you as a viewer. So just hit that red button and I will see you in my next video. Bye.